On July the 18th, a battle had developed on the Confederate right at Blackburn's Ford. The reconnaissance in force that had been conducted by Brigadier General Daniel Tyler failed, and the Confederates held the ford. McDowell had under his command roughly 31,000 green and poorly trained troops. To his west, another 18,000 men under Major General Robert Patterson was stationed in the Shenandoah Valley, with the objective to hold the Confederate Army of the Shenandoah under the command of Joseph E. Johnston in place, and prevent him from being able to reinforce Beauregard at Manassas. This he failed to do, as on the morning of the 18th, Johnson was able to move out of Winchester, his movements being covered by a cavalry screen. McDowell felt that for his maneuvering to work, he needed to act quickly, more so since rumors had been circulating that Johnson's army was to soon to arrive, meaning that the Union would lose the numerical advantage. Another reason for quick action was McDowell's concern that the 90-day enlistments of many of his regiments were about to expire. In fact, the next morning, Two units had their enlistments expiring that day, and would turn a deaf ear to McDowell's appeal to stay a few days longer. Instead, to the sound of battle, they would march back to Washington to be mustered out of service. With frustration setting in, McDowell settled to attack the Confederate left flank, while also harassing all along the line. Although this was at least a theoretically sound plan, it had a number of flaws. It was one that required synchronized execution of troop movements and attacks skills that had not been developed in the Green Army and Command. It relied on actions by Patterson that he had already failed to take, and finally, McDowell had delayed long enough that Johnson's Valley Force was able to board trains at Piedmont Station and rush to Manassas to reinforce Beauregard's men. With Beauregard's army reinforced on the 19th and 20th, he planted most of Johnson's men in the vicinity of Blackburn's Ford, intending to strike towards Centersville. At 2 a.m. on the 21st, 20,000 men in three divisions marched from Centersville against the largely exposed Confederate left, arriving a little past 6 a.m. at Bull Run Creek. All that stood in the way of these divisions was 1,100 men under, under Colonel Nathan Shanks Evans, who were held in place at Stone Bridge. A signaler from headquarters alerted Evans to the division's coming, and his men managed to move themselves to the top of Matthew Hill, on the northwest of his original position, to meet this attack. Fighting soon occurred, and while Evans managed to hold off the attack for some time, William de Constant Sherman and his command found an unprotected ford and smashed into the right flank of Evans, forcing them to retreat. A new line was formed on Henry Hill, with Brigadier General Thomas J. Jackson, five regiment, stationed on the Confederate left. This battle is where the famous name Stonewall Jackson first came to be, yelled out by Barnard Elliott B., although the exact quote is still up to debate. The 33rd Virginian, under Jackson's command, managed to capture two Union batteries, who had mistaken the Virginians for Union troops. These guns proved key to winning the battle, and by 4 p.m., all Union soldiers were off of Henry Hill, most retreating back to Washington. The Northern public was shocked at the unexpected defeat of their army with an, when an easy victory had been widely anticipated. Both sides quickly came to realize that the war would be longer and more brutal than they had imagined. On July the 22nd, Lincoln signed a bill that provided for the enlistment of another 500,000 men for up to three years of service. The reaction of the Confederacy was more muted. There was little public celebration, as the Southerners realized that despite their victory, the greater battles that would inevitably come would mean greater losses for their side as well. Once the euphoria of victory had worn off, Jefferson Davis called for 400 additional volunteers, 